Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we'll be looking at the Crocodilian Carnivore of Africa. Thank you to Kevin O'Bill4818 for today's topic, Sucomimus. Sucomimus was first discovered in 1997 by paleontologist David Varicio as part of an expedition team led by Paul Sereno. This original fossil was nearly two-thirds complete and discovered in the modern-day country of Niger, specifically the desert of Tanere, near the center of the country. The fossil would then be named and described by a team of nearly 13 professors in 1998 who named this dinosaur as a new genus and species called Sucomimus tenorensis. This naming would then begin a time of confusion surrounding this genus. Soon after its naming, it was suggested that Sucomimus was not a new genus, but instead a species of a previously named dinosaur called Crustatosaurus laparenti, another spinosaurid discovered the same year. It was also noted that the skeleton of Sucomimus was almost indistinguishable from that of another dinosaur, the Baryonyx. It was suggested that Sucomimus was an African species of the European genus, to be named Baryonyx tenorensis. In 2002, German paleontologist Hans Dieter Seuss and his team concluded that Crustatosaurus laparenti was a dubious gnomon basically concluding that the genus does not actually exist. Sucomimus vs. Baryonyx would take longer, but eventually in 2017, a paper by Carlos A. Condiero and his team concluded that while the two were related, they were in fact distinct genus. Only one species of Sucomimus is recognized, Sucomimus tenorensis. Its name stems from the Latin words suco for crocodile, and mimus for mimic, translating to crocodile mimic. This name is in reference to the skull, and particularly the jaws of Sucomimus, mirroring the long jaws with pointed teeth of modern-day crocodiles. Tenorensis is in reference to the Tenere Desert, the original location in which Sucomimus was discovered. Sucomimus was a Saurischian theropod and belonged to the Spinosauridae family. The Spinosauridae are potentially one of the most bizarre carnivorous dinosaurs to ever walk the earth, distinct for their long crocodile-like jaws and most famously their elongated neural vertebrae, appearing like sails on their backs. This family includes the previously mentioned Baryonyx as well as the famous Spinosaurus. Due to limited specimens and issues in determining ages of recovered fossils, the exact size of Sucomimus has been debated. Based on an analysis of the type specimen who is believed to be a subadult, it is believed that Sucomimus could reach between 31 and 36 feet in length and about 12 feet tall. It is estimated that Sucomimus would have weighed about 4 tons, approximately the same weight as an adult hippopotamus. Its jaws are certainly the most iconic feature of this beast with the skull alone of Sucomimus being able to reach 4 feet in length. These jaws could contain up to 122 teeth, which were pointed and curved backwards, excellent for gripping and holding on to prey. As a Spinosauridae member, Sucomimus had extended neural spines that extended upward on the back vertebrae, from the end of their neck to the middle of their tail. It is believed that these spines would be covered with skin to appear as a small sail on their back. While the sail of Sucomimus was not as prominent as Spinosaurus, it is believed that the sail would grow larger as the animal aged. Sucomimus also had powerful forelimbs, possibly some of the strongest among theropods. These arms supported massive claws. The first digit or thumb of Sucomimus could be almost 8 inches in length. These claws would have been ideal for gripping live prey and holding on to them as they struggle. The lifestyle of Sucomimus and other Spinosaurides has been hotly debated among paleontologists. 
Their physical makeup is significantly different than any other theropod, leaving many to believe that maybe they didn't hunt like other theropods. In 1986, paleontologists Alan Scherig and Angela Milner first suggested the now well-accepted theory that Baryonyx and by proximity other Spinosauridae members were piscivores, or fish eaters. A 1997 discovery of fish remains in the stomach of a baryonyx fossil seemed to confirm this theory, and later studies would continue to flush out how exactly this animal lived. The jaws and teeth of Suchomimus are very similar to modern-day Piscivorus crocodilians. The longer jaws would not be able to handle the stress of bending from large herbivorous dinosaurs, but would give ideal surface area for catching fish from the water's edge. The teeth, in particular, due to their bend and length, were ideal for gripping, not tearing. The muscular claws of Suchomimus have not been as well agreed upon in the scientific community. In their 1986 paper, Cherig and Milner suggested that the claws would be used like modern-day grizzly bears, to skewer fish with their long claws and then pull them out of the water to devour them. Other theories believe that the claws could be used to pick apart bodies while scavenging on land, slashing land-based prey rather than biting them, or burrowing into the ground to hunt for prey and building nests. An interesting difference among Spinosauridae members is the density of their bones. As the hollow bones of Suchomimus would indicate that this animal preferred riverside or shallow water hunting. Meanwhile, other members like Spinosaurus and Baryonyx had denser bones that allowed for completely submerged hunting. Suchomimus lived during the early Cretaceous period from 125 to 100 million years ago. It lived in modern day Niger, as well as other West African countries. During this time, Africa was covered in extensive floodplains and rivers, ideal for the fishing lifestyle of Suchomimus. It likely would have lived alongside large herbivores like the sail-backed Oranosaurus and Nigersaurus. While these dinosaurs could be the occasional prey of Suchomimus, it likely would have only scavenged on the corpses of these animals, who were hunted by more terrestrial carnivores, like the Cryptops. The specialized diet of Suchomimus actually could have been the reason for their extinction, as it is hypothesized that the floodplains of Africa gradually dried up, moving into the late Cretaceous, and Suchomimus' highly specialized characteristics prevented it from adapting to land-based prey. While Spinosaurus can often take the spotlight for its massive size and more prominent features, Suchomimus has still had its own opportunities to shine in pop culture. Some spotlight appearances include the 1998 documentary Colossal Claw, which focused on the recovery and exploration of a Suchomimus skeleton, as well as the 2004 film Dino Croc, which features a heavily mutated Suchomimus as the main antagonist. Beyond these, Suchomimus has also had smaller roles, like in the 2008's television show Dinosaur King, 2009's documentary When Crocs Ate Dinosaurs, and the 2020 video game Path of Titans. Suchomimus was a powerful and ferocious carnivore in its day. Its massive jaws and razor-sharp claws made it a formidable opponent, on land or in the water. Whether you were a fish or not, running into this creature would have obviously souked. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Suchomimus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. We'll be scaling back next week's video, not in video size, but in dino size, as we look at the adorable Sinosauropteryx. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.